So the big boys stand up now. Ranging from 16 to 22. The 22-year-old is the national champion, Nathan Cap, And New Zealand record holder. Yep, and wearing the green cap. So Aqua Knights looking for bonus points. Double points for winning this. And Nathan Cap is way ahead of the rest in terms of reputation and standing and standard. He's in the green cap, not in front at the moment. Alongside him, Dominic Milden of Harlequins. But just watch as Cap gets into his stroke, into his rhythm, and see how, uh, with such a cruisy mode, is able to swallow up, swallow up the rest in this race. Won't happen in this 50, but you'll see it. Down in lane one, we've got Ewan Jackson, well performed for Harlequins. Yeah, Commonwealth Games representative, and one that's really starting to make a big impact on the scene. Came through and uh, got into the 4x200 free relay team at the national championships to go to the Commonwealth Games. Uh, really surprised a lot of people, but he's swimming so well. And what's going to yeah. be interesting is can he transfer that sort of t uh, sprint speed, you know, 200 freestyle into this 1500? And can he take points away from what is going to be the joker um, cap there of Nathan Cap? You notice Cap's not being sucked into anything here, is he? He's just drifting back. It's his own race. He's swimming it the way he wants to. Well, if he looked across, he'd see you and Jackson and think, well, hello. <laughs> he's having a go here. Yeah, but he knows that you and Jackson yeah. is a bit more of a sprinter. Nathan Cap doing a really good job, too, in the ocean water swimming series at the moment. Jeremy Tasker is in lane two. He's a 20-year-old from Neptune. We've got Liam Albury. Uh, Thomas Heaton is the other Marcos swimmer. He's in uh, lane number six. 16-year-old uh, from Tasman. 1,500 uh, metres, 15 years of age, uh, freestyle title holder. Yeah, John, Liam Albury in lane number three has started to swim open water swims now. Uh, he was third at the 10K and third at the 5K open water series for the open water selection for the World Championships. Well, we had a, a great a deal to say, didn't we, about Daniel Bell, uh, how this is his last race, and, of course, he hadn't shaved or anything. I just wonder how much training he did for this. But anyway, he might tell us as Ian Jones chats with him. Yep, thanks very much, John. Two-time uh, Olympian, of course, went to the Com Games, silver medal as well. And, yeah, the rumour is going around, Daniel Bell, this may be your last swim meet. Yeah, it's been a pretty good career so far, and uh, having a few shoulder problems still after London, so uh, I think the body sort of had enough of the sport and it's time to move on to new challenges. But we'll get into your uh, swimming very soon because you've had a wonderful career, but it's an individual sport swimming, but here all of a sudden you're in this team concept. How are you enjoying it? Yeah, I've always enjoyed the team concept. I've been a, a huge fan of relays and relays is how I originally made it onto the international scene in Beijing. So I think and, and any team, even when you're going away with the national team as an individual, it's, it's still about coming together as a team and supporting everyone. Now Dan, we know how hard, for swimmers know how hard swimming is, the preparation, the work you have to do to get to your level, Commonwealth Games, Olympic Games. Give everyone else a bit of an insight to the life of a swimmer. Yeah, it's, it's basically a full-time job. Uh, you ask anyone who's competed at the Olympic level, it's, it's 30 hour weeks of training alone, uh, week in, week out, and it's 52 weeks of the year. You're lucky to get sort of three or four days off uh, between pinnacle events and the start of the next season. So it's a long, hard slog, and there's not a lot of downtime, so uh, it makes for the rest of life reasonably hard, but it's worth it when you get to go to the Olympics and represent your country. Yeah, and let's talk about that silver medal in Delhi, which is wonderful. We've just talked to Gary Herring, who's a 200-back specialist. You, of course, a 100-back specialist. Quite different races? Yeah, completely different. Uh, I swam the 200-back earlier tonight, and I think it, it showed how different they are. It's, it's another two lengths. It's double the distance, and completely different training programs involved in, in the two events, even though they're the same stroke. Um, I've been lucky enough that I'm full of fast twitch fibres and not the slow twitch, so my races don't last as long. But um, yeah, I've, I've always done the 200 in season for, for training purposes and for the backing speed of the 100, but the 100's always been by far the better race. 
Gary, talk about one of the big initiatives in the backstroke, in particular the dolphin kick underwater. I mean, you yourself spend a good chunk of the race uh, underneath. Yeah, it's uh, a huge part of, of swimming in general now, whether it be fly, freestyle, with the likes of Michael Phelps doing what he's doing. He's going 10 to 15 metres underwater in the freestyle and still pulling away from the top guys in the world. So uh, it's, it's a thing that's developed over the years, and I think Michael Phelps brought it to the forefront that you can really win races from the skills, and uh, that's something I've been lucky enough to be quite good at and taken advantage of in my career. Well, Daniel, it might be the end of the career. Who knows? You may be back uh, when the Echo Hawks uh, Knights throw a ring next year, but you must uh, still love the sport, and you look like you got so much out of it. Yeah, I love it to bits, and that's why I'm still in it and, and here helping the team, even though my international career might be at the end. It's good to be here and inspire the kids and compete with the kids and try and help the Equinites team out, uh, and hopefully we get the win this year. Thank you, Daniel. Well done. Yes, he has been an outstanding swimmer. And um, speaking very well there to Ian Jones and giving us an insight into his career. And a lot, and a lot of people will be thinking 100 backstroke, 200 backstroke, pretty much the same training, you're just going a bit further, but as he points out, totally different races. Yeah, totally different races, totally different physiology as well. Uh, biomechanics as well, slightly different uh, in terms of the technique that you need to employ. But you know what I, I think we should always pick up on is he talked about the skill sets of Michael Phelps, how he showed that the turns become very important and the skill sets that you need. Swimming is a skill-limited sport. In other words, if you don't work very hard on all the important skills, you're not going to perform because it's technique-based. You've got to have that sound technique to be able to use water to go forward. And that's, that's just so important. And we employ that from learn to swim right through to coaching. So we're looking at Nathan Cap wearing the green cap, the Joker's cap in this men's 1500 meter. And of course we do have those uh, great underwater shots. So off the wall you can see sometimes different techniques and you as a top flight coach, Mark, having coached New Zealand and now with your learn to swim schools and your involvement with some triathletes and so on, uh, you can pick those subtle differences under, under the water. Who's getting maximum benefit out of their underwater technique? As we watch now Nathan Cap coming to the wall, this men's 1500 meter. Yeah, so Nathan Cap, he, as you mentioned earlier on, John, he was just uh, sitting back in the first part. He was in second position over the first 400 meters to Jackson, Ewan Jackson in lane at number eight, but uh, sorry, lane number one, but he's now starting to dominate it. Two seconds behind at the 400, but he's got a continuous kick. You'll notice that it's almost a, a six beat kick for most of it, and then he drops it into a four beat. So by that, for every arm cycle, you will see six kicks if we're talking about a six beat kick. Now that's more synonymous with what we'd see in a sprinter, but the likes of the Australians who dominated uh, in the 1500 uh, over the years with Perkins and then Hackett, they actually taught the rest of the world that you can still employ a six-beat kick in the 1500 metres. So what that also says is that these swimmers need to do a huge amount of kick in their programme to be able to sustain that. As we see, Nathan Cap coming through the 800 metres now, 8 minutes 19. Ewan Jackson in 8.24. Looking at one of the others in this race, uh, in lane number seven. Just out of shot at the moment, but coming into shot soon is Devlin Forsyth from All Stars. He's a 16-year-old from the Karori Pirates Club in Wellington. Coached by Steve Francis. Thomas Heaton from Marcos is in lane six. We can just see him going off the wall and to the right there in lane number six. He's from Tasman, mentioned him earlier. Stuart Graham is uh, the swimmer in lane eight from Aqua Knights. And Stuart Graham is uh, one of three 16-year-olds there. He's from Napier Aqua Hawks. Napier Aqua, Hawk, Aqua Hawks. Good fly swimmer, individual medley as well. Yeah, nice shot there of Nathan Cap as we see just a really smooth rhythm. 
good turn still in this 1500 look how long he's under the water so he's getting about seven meters underneath the turbulence the turbulence that he's actually created as he goes into the wall and he wants to make sure that he uses an advantage again off the walls went through the first 400 in four minutes nine the second 400 in four minutes ten so you can see that it's very easy even splitting and that's uh, that's something that we want to encourage in distance swimming Consider that you get about a two second advantage off a dive, so you take a four minutes nine for his first 400, and then a 410 for the second 400. You can show that he actually is swimming the second 400 faster if you eliminate the dive. But he's not really swimming this race for time. He's swimming it to win because he's also representing his team and he's wearing the Joker cap. Dominic and Milden is. Uh alongside Nathan Cap, well not at the moment but he's in lane five and he's uh, from Hawak Takaranga went to the junior pan tax last year 18 years of age so you'll see there that uh Nathan Cap just breathing under the bow wave the bow wave that he's created by that good shoulder rotation as he breathes to his right hand side as his left arm goes into the water, he just gets a little bit of a catch there onto that left arm, creating the, the lift of the shoulder on the opposite side in the bow wave. Now, it looks so effortless there on top of the water, out of the water, but underneath an amazing amount of work being done with those arms and, and the kick, and you've talked about, you explained the uh, six-beat kick and so on, Mark, but... You don't get a sense of how much pull of the arms is being operated there, how much work of the shoulders and chest area. We'll have a look at this turn, John. We'll see just whether or not he puts in the butterfly kick, and there it goes, a couple of butterfly kicks, and that's why he's getting about seven metres off the wall. Now, have a look at you and Jackson, if we can get a shot there. We just missed it. But he just doesn't get the same distance off the walls, and that's the difference. So that's conditioning, that's training. I guess at the same time, Nathan Cap is in a dilemma. He knows that he needs to win this race, and he's wearing the joker, so it's double points. But he also knows that he's got the national championships coming along uh, in a couple of months, and so he wants to keep up the intensity in the training. And you don't get a lot of opportunities to swim a 1500, particularly long course in a lot of events. So he'll be very aware of that. He's in a fine line. He knows that he'll have to swim a 400 freestyle later on as well. Well, we've got the Legends Relay coming up for you later where we've got, uh, as Mark has mentioned, 15 former Olympians. Uh, one of those who's involved, not uh, an Olympic swimmer, but uh, he's got a fair bit to do with swimming, of course, with his, in his role. Here's Scott Rice with Ian Jones. Yeah, thanks very much, John. Here with now Scott Rice, of course, a former New Zealand swimmer, which is great, but now the director of the State Ocean and Beach Series, and you've really popularised ocean swimming. Yeah, hi, Ian. It's great to be here. Um, to dust off the speedos and get back in. Uh, like most of the people up on the stand, not much training been done, so it's going to be an interesting relay, but it's a fantastic cause to raise money for our team for Diabetes New Zealand. Let's talk about the phenomenon that really is ocean swimming now. I mean, you started, what, 10, 11 years ago with the harbour crossing, and now you've got six events right around the country. Yeah, it's been awesome. I mean, swimming didn't have, um, in the open water, it wasn't a big sport back in 2004. And to see, you know, all, all types of swimmers, from triathletes to ex-swimmers to water polo players to see if lifesavers have a go, and all the weekend warriors, it's just been great to see the growth of the sport. And um, it's still very rewarding being at the finish line, watching people come over. We're seeing the young kids swimming the 1,500 metres in a pool, wonderful conditions, flat water out there. How different is the ocean swimming? Oh, we see it every time, you know, there's no black line to follow, there's the swell and there's the waves and all of these things that can, you know, you've got to look up every six strokes. So I think um, being confident in the open water, confident in the ocean is very important for New Zealanders, uh, you know, from kids so they can be safe and parents can feel confident around the water. Now two more races to go in the series, 2.14, uh, 2.15, where are they and when are they? We've got actually three races in. We've got um, our Christchurch swim next Sunday, uh, State Le Grand swim, then Mount Monganui, uh, the Sander Surf, and then our finale, the, uh, the 11th or 12th running of the King of the Bays on Takapena Beach. That's going to be fun. Yes, that's going to be the Sunday after the New Zealand Open, which is going to be live on Sky, and maybe get some of those pool swimmers. The swim I know I'm certainly going to be there. Now, get back to the swimming. You're racing in the Legends. Normally, 
you blow the hooter and let other people swim, you are going to have to do it. You're doing it for Diabetes New Zealand. Yeah, it's great. We've got a team. Uh, we've got a, um, Tim Bowen, who was a turn-a-metre backstroke at the Commonwealth Games in 1990, right here at this pool. We've got Robert Voss, who um, had, um, and maybe still does, Daniel Loder's 400-metre freestyle short course record, and Alana Jury, who's an, a really fantastic open water swimmer back in her day, was at the World Champs as well. So I'm amongst probably distant swimmers, and I'm the only sprinter in the team. So I guess I'm gonna, that's a bit of pressure for me. OK, thanks for your time, Scott. I really look forward to seeing you suffer, actually. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Scott Rice will love the challenge. He's really looking forward to this, eh? Yeah, who would ever have thought, though, John, that you had the vision to make open water swimming the event that it is, with the amount of people that are training for it and actually going in and participating in it. It's unbelievable. You look at the evolution of running over the years and then golf and open water swimming, I would never have ever picked it. Oh, you know, when you congratulations look at... to Scott Rice on doing it. Yeah. Well, swimming in New Zealand is, is often people look at how many members are in a, a swim club, meaning swimmers like this or you know, casual swimmers who, who join a club. But uh, then you look at the figures of how many people swim in New Zealand, and it's one of the most popular and um, most participant-driven sports in the country. But a lot of it is due to triathlons. But ocean water swimming has now taken on, hasn't it? Yeah, and, most and, it's, and it's massive. So lots of people are swimming. I think Swimming New Zealand would like each of them, you know, those people who do participate in anything to throw $10 in and <laughs> become members <laughs> it would help their finances. But it is a huge participation sport in New Zealand. And, it, you know, it's non-weight bearing, so you really can't yeah. get any yeah. injuries whatsoever. Yeah. So it also caters for all body types as well. Yeah. And with the evolution and, and involvement of wetsuits and the, the, uh, the fact that they have such an advantage too to help the other people. But we shouldn't forget this race that was run by Nathan Cap, a very good swim by the New Zealand record holder. And double points as well. Yeah, 15.45 was his time. So it's not a bad time for Nathan Cap, but as we keep on saying, it was... You know, not, it's not about the, the time, it's about winning and getting maximum points for your team. This time it's Aqua Knights, the Waikato, Hawke's Bay, Poverty Bay, Taranaki sort of area. Well, I think more they'll importantly, be very John, happy with Nathan Cap. Yeah, more importantly, it's a good time for this time of the year. So next up, we'll have the women's 800 metres. That's uh, the longest pool event for women. Just awaiting the final swimmer to come through in the men's, and that's Stuart Graham of Aqua Knights. Stuart Graham from Napier Aqua Hawks, I mentioned earlier, He's swimming out in uh, lane number eight. There we see, though, the face of Nathan Cap. New Zealand representative and now leading 1500 metres swimmer of the moment, New Zealand record holder. Stuart Graham at 16 years of age from Napier. Well, but more importantly, John, somebody had to do this event for their team, yeah. and he's going to pick up four events, if, uh, four points. If he didn't do it, there'd be zero points. That's right. And, and when we look at what he's mainly into, it's uh, 50 and 100 metres butterfly, uh, individual medley, 50 metres freestyle. I mean, he's a, he's a sprinter, basically. But he had to do that, and it, he wouldn't have enjoyed it, but he's given his team four points. Four points, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing pretty about it, and there was nothing great about it, but, you know, end of the day, it's point scoring. Women's 800 metres, their longest event. We've seen Maya Rasmussen. She wore the pink cap earlier and got double points in one of the earlier events. She's swimming out of lane four. Crouched down ready in the black cap. Aqua Knights have Caitlin Tippett in lane one and uh, Isla Kuraim of uh, in lane five. Harlequins have Hayley McIntosh in two, JC Crop in six. All Stars have Elena Forlong in lane number eight, and Maya Rasmussen in four. That leaves uh, Taylor Harwood of Marcos and the Caitlin Deans of Marcos in lanes seven and three, respectively. Well, Maya Rasmussen, was, you've already said, won the 400 individual medley. She was the joker in that event, and so she picked up maximum points. 
and she won that event in the back end in the breaststroke and the freestyle. Now she has to turn her attention to the 800 freestyle event that's been dominated by Lauren Boyle for New Zealand. And Raya Rasmussen, you know, she's the youngest swimmer in this field of eight. She's only 14 years of age. I wonder how much that 400 individual medley has taken out of her, though. Well, she had to give it everything in that. She's had a, an hour, I suppose, um, since then, out of Kiwi West Aquatics. So she's the New Zealand age group record holder in the 13 and 14 years 400 metres individual medley. At the New Zealand Short Course Championship, she was second in the 400 IM, third in the 200 fly. And she's won numerous age group titles as a 14-year-old. So she's a talent without doubt. But this is the 800 metres. And when you've got talent, you actually like to evolve them in the medley events because then they're getting versatility in their training. They're getting some cross-training as well because they're doing all four strokes, butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke and freestyle. But the conditioning and the aerobic conditioning of it is fantastic as well. Particularly young swimmers, you don't want to specialise too early. You want to encourage them to be a medley swimmer. We look at Australia and one of Australia's greatest swimmer in N Thorpe. He was a medley swimmer first and foremost when he first hit the international scene. Oh, sorry, the national scene, and then uh, he evolved into that 200-400 speciality. Lines four and five. Nothing better than a distance event where you've got competition as well, where they're right on your shoulder the whole time. 16 lengths of the pool, the 800 metres freestyle. And these swimmers will be knowing, they'll be watching each other, they'll be looking at what tactics are they employing, when are they starting to make a move, am I getting an advantage off any of the turns? Am I using the turns better than the swimmer beside me? Or am I having to have to do it all in the what we call the free swimming? You take away the turns and what goes on for probably 40 metres of the 50 metre pool. Caitlin Deans of Marcos on the bottom here and the silver cap and above her Maya Rasmussen of All Stars. They're the two leaders in the women's 800 metres, women's 15 and under 800 metres. Probably going to be a good shot here of these two leaders on the turns. We'll have a look at the differences that each of them employ off the walls. So Rasmussen, there, a couple of dolphin kicks coming off the wall quite well getting at least seven metres. The turn flags are indicating five metres that they're getting off the walls. So Rasmussen just picking it up a little bit now. Almost a three-quarters body length advantage from Caitlin Deans. Caitlin Deans is uh, from Neptune. She won the 14 years 200 metres, 400 metres and 800 metres freestyle at the short course championships last year. She's second at the moment in this 800 free. So with that sort of record, you would just wonder whether she might outlast Rasmussen, but as you've already mentioned, if you've got talent, <laughs> it suddenly appears or can suddenly appear in all sorts of areas. And Rasmussen's digging it in here. Yeah, she looks really well conditioned, doesn't she, Rasmussen? And you'd expect that a, a 400 individual medley swimmer. She's now got one and a half body lengths advantage. And 4.28 at the 400 metre mark, the halfway stage, 4 minutes 28. Hayley McIntosh in lane two, looks to be in third place. JC Crop of Harlequins. Taylor Harwood is in first, touching fifth. Elena Forlong. Well, just have a look Caitlin at that. The, the two Harlequin swimmers in lane number two and lane number six. So they're respectively third and fourth. So the two Harlequin swimmers, that's really valuable points when you can get into third and fourth. And uh, they're doing a good job of securing points. Mit what we keep saying, mitigating losses. Just repeating those points that are on offer. Uh, for a win, it's 26 points for your zone, your team. For second, it's 21. Then it goes 17 for third, 12 for fourth, 10 for fifth, 8 for sixth, sixth, six points for seventh, 
And for finishing eighth, you collect four points uh, for your zone. And so, as uh, Mark was mentioning, for example, uh, two swimmers from the same zone currently third and fourth, they could get 29 points. Ian Jones now is with a chap we were talking about before, Chinese Olympian and gold medalist uh, for relays in London. Here's with Ian Jones. Yeah, thanks very much, John. Very special guest, of course. A medalist, bronze medal at the 212 London Games for China, of course. I mean, tell us first about that experience and the Chinese team. Um, it's pretty amazing, pretty awesome. Um, I was so excited when I won the bronze medal in London. But now I'm trying to swim in New Zealand, and actually it's, it's different system, and it's totally different, uh, it's different lifestyle. And I pretty much like the lifestyle here, and I train pretty well here. Well, we love medalists, of course, in this country. We'll do anything to get you from China to New Zealand. What do you have to be or do to swim for New Zealand? Yeah, I'm trying to. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to to get uh, you know get resident and I, I swim here and race here, um, but I really enjoying the atmosphere, trend here, so I'm trying to do it. Yeah. Well, I know some people, Michael. So you see me afterwards, and we'll get you something for New Zealand. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Well, Michael Dai there. Uh, bronze medalist for the 4x200 meters freestyle relay for China at the 2012 Olympic Games. And a rare Chinese medal for the men, apart yeah. from their 1500 swimmer. Mm. Uh, you know, so that, that in the men's events, they don't get a lot of medals. Their women's, we know that they've dominated world swimming at different times. Questionably, though. Yeah. Yes, they went through a, a black patch, didn't they? Yeah, certainly did, sadly. As we see, we've got the bell for the last 100 metres. Maya Rasmussen just extending that lead. Well, that's not a good start. Caitlin Dean's just stopping. Still 100 metres still to go. Obviously miscounted. Caught up in the moment and just lost their focus. So Maya well, Rasmussen and Caitlin Dean's we're swimming almost alongside each other. Not much more than a body length between them over the first 400. Rasmussen now turning with a sizable advantage over Dean. So the All-Stars. John, we talked about the two Harlequin swimmers that were currently in third and fourth. But they're not having it all their own way because the young Marco swimmer, Taylor Harwood, in lane number seven, is doing an outstanding job in the latter stages of this race. In fact, I think she may have just overtaken the Harlequin swimmer that was in fourth position. In fact, she has done that. Can she come up and actually win the bronze? Rasmussen will touch and get maximum points for the All-Stars team. We'll see uh, Deans come through now. And then the battle that Mark was talking about will be about 25 metres from the finish. And uh, that was to see whether Taylor Harwood of Marcos could cut down the number of points that the Harlequins get. And look at it up here. This is Hay Harwood. Oh, no, it, up the top, it's Harwood. And down here in lane two, Hayley McIntosh of Harlequins. And Taylor Harwood and uh, JC Crop having a very good battle towards the end. And that's... Uh, we talk about getting points for your team. It's also a matter of cutting down points for your opposition. They all know that the Harlequins team is leading and every point counts so chopping say getting fifth instead of sixth that means it doesn't